Welcome you guys to Butler Kennel Rockwallers, man. Today, um, I'm just taking me a little drive and just wanted to tell you guys thank you. Um, making today a day of um, giving you guys some good information, man. And I'm very grateful to be able to have this platform to give to you guys um, some positive um, videos and all that kind of good stuff. So if this is your first time tuning in, man, hope you guys hit the like button, the subscribe button, notification bell. Just want to tell you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, man, for making us the biggest rock wallet channel on YouTube right now. And I appreciate that. I do not take that for granted. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, man, to the top. Um, so let's get right into it. So there's certain things that we're going to talk about right now that are very educational. I know it's not going to be the videos you're going to see all the puppies and the dogs and the eating of the cows and puppies playing in the yard and, you know, just a bunch of good stuff that I normally would show you guys. Today is informative, and I think this is informative month. Informative month. Uh, the last video we just did was a video of uh, showing you guys how we upkeeping the always pitting back into our kennels to make our kennels successful to where we are today um it's one of the biggest key things that a lot of people don't think about man um a lot of people just want to get into breeding and don't understand that breeding takes more work than the average person thinks about you know what i mean um like i have to first say if anything I have to first apologize because I think I made it seem very easy that people are just breeding and making a lot of money and, you know, having a lot of dogs and having a lot of time. These are some of the biggest factors into breeding. I'm going to tell you right now. First thing is going to be time. Um, you're not going to have as much time as you think you're going to have if you're breeding because dogs are a 24 hour day duty. You know what I mean? Um, just think about when you go on on your regular day job, nine to five, typically an average person goes to work from nine to five and they get off on work and they're done. Imagine that's all day, every day. Even on your days off, you have to tend to that. It's a child. Um, it's a child that you're not pitting in daycare, basically easiest way to put it. Um, you're not going there pitting, man, you almost hit me coming around the corner. Um, but this is something that you have a child, basically, or children, um, because if you're breeding, you have most likely having more than one dog at a time. Um, a lot of times when you want to go on vacation, you cannot. A lot of times uh, you want to just go somewhere right quick, you cannot, because you got to think about that if you're having puppies on the ground, um, I will say me personally, it's been so many years that I've not celebrated my anniversary and birthdays and stuff uh, that I wanted to uh, been the way I wanted to because I'm always gone working and doing these good things or whatever. Um, but the joy I get out of it is totally worth it. Um, sometimes you have to find that balance uh, with your significant other. Now, if you two are on the same page, it does make it a lot easier. Um, I will tell you, if anybody is going into breeding or any business at that, make sure that you're doing this because this is what you want to, regardless if you get help from anybody else at all. Um, because I think a lot of times I see a lot of partnership and breeding that fail because the main person is expecting the same efforts and energy as, the, as their partner. Um, partners can support but partners don't have to do the exact amount of work putting in because it's your dream. If this is really truly your dream and it's not just about money, um, it goes into it, right? So you're gonna put a lot of work and time and effort into it. So timing is a very, very big thing. Um, uh, commitment is huge. When I say huge, commitment is huge. A lot of breeders, um, I guess that's kind of the second thing. I, I made that the second thing because first thing was time. Um, two is the people. But commitment is is very key. You have to be committed to this thing. You cannot waver one day you want to breed, next day you don't, next day you... Because breeders are going to go through a... Like any business is going to up, down, highs, and lows. Um, when... Some people start breeding, they may have the luck of success. 
then they're going to run into this dry spill or they're going to run. But the biggest thing about it is you're not doing it for everything else. If you have a love and a passion for it, trust me, you're going to take so many L's. You're going to take, you're going to, it's going to test your will to continue on. That's why a lot, you see a lot of breeders out there, but you see very few stay in the game long enough to see the end results. Because uh, what happens is a lot of people aren't committed. They want to get in this business. And I see a lot of people coming to me. Hey, Tony, I want to breed with you. I want to do this with you because they want to see the they want to see the positivity of gains for them. They want to see the fact that they're going to have puppies and they're going to make this money and they're going to do this. And and that's what most times problem is. A lot of times people are committed to the money. So when the money don't come in, they don't they don't finish it out because they're not getting what they wanted. They they say, hey, I invested five grand into this, so I want to see five grand back and then ten grand back. Sometimes you're going to invest ten grand into something, um, and then you not get that back, which leads into the third thing, right? Money, because they all go together. That's why it's like it flows together. You got to be committed because then commitments, then you lead into the money. The money part is people think that making money is the biggest thing about breeding. It's not. People are going to start, some breeders, some breeders start off like police officers. They start off with the intent of wanting to be the safe person or make a difference in it. Then they get in the force and then they start seeing all the corrupt stuff and they kept continuing to follow them and they fall into the trap of everybody else because they get accustomed to it. And like a lot of other jobs do the same thing. Breeders are like people come into this thing thinking like, hey, I want to be better. I want to do better. They start realizing doing testings on these dogs, doing this on these dogs, paying for breedings, paying for the dogs, having them do this, shipping and all this kind of stuff. It gets so much money that they're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to breed this dog right quick, make a couple bucks, pay for this bill, and then I'll be all right. Then when that money has gone, the same thing happens over and over and over and over again to where it's the same method. And then for you realize you are falling into a rut of failure because now it's not about doing what's right you're breeding for the money because you're so deep in the hole guess what's going to happen you guys when you start breeding you're going to lose money simple as that you don't get into breeding thinking you because you have a lot of investments and anything um i think i can't remember who actually said it but it said oh um um Ah, oh, man. Ice Cube said, if you're not willing to put at least five years of work and dedication and not make anything back out of it, man, you're not committed, bro. Like, you you have to be so in, too invested into this thing that, you know, without seeing a single dollar dime. When I tell you there's been so many years I came back in the negative because I'm re-putting back so much money into my business that I'm not seeing any dollar bills at all. And I'm like... Man, why, but I'm always thinking about the betterment of my dog. Like, yes, I look back 10 years and I'm like, man, that was horrible. I could have did better. But I did the best that I can at the time what I had. And now that when you know better, you do better. So I'm always trying to improve. Hopefully, I look back 10 years from now and be like, man, I wish I'd have done this differently. i done this better. Because that just means that I'm seeing better opportunity and better ways of doing things and, and bettering myself. So it's not a, a fault of mine right now. I'm just hoping that I become better than I was yesterday. And if I continue to be that same method and mindset 10 years from now, I'm going to have a complete different mindset of how to better my kennel, how to better things. And plus the world is changing. Back in the day, people was using Craigslist to buy dogs. Then, you know, you had your um, MySpace and then social media took over. Uh, you had the newspaper pitting ads in the newspaper a lot of cats will never understand what really went into it and i get it old guys you know they look at us and be like yo the younger guys will be like man all i know is supposed to get a puppy post it on social media i got this bloodline that's it come by my dog and they think that's it like that's it's so much more to it than that man um but financially you're going to have to take a loss before you take a win unless you've fallen into money unless you inherited a kennel from your parents or somebody else and successful and you writing their names or whatever then maybe so you know but someone like myself 
I got it out the mud. I didn't have any family members that passed down kennels generations to me. I didn't have anybody with a known name. I didn't take over a family business. I was the bread starter of this here um, for for my kennel and doing so um, as well. So we talked about time. We talked about commitment. We talked about money. And now we go with the friends. All right. And this business cancel that friendship out. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have some people who won't rock with you. But a lot of people are going to rock with you only when they have a hand in the pot that they can that they're going to receive some kind of success off of. All right. Success. Everyone wants the end results, but a lot of people don't want the process. See, going through the process of building this kennel and get no one was there. And I get it. Some people are like, well, I didn't know about you. I got you. And I, I don't take it personal. Um, there were a lot of people that when I was starting it, told me, don't do this. You know, ah, whatever. You ain't going to be you. So friends and families are, are going to be negative. Some of them are going to be positive. Some are going to ride with you. Some are going to ride with you only because they see what they can benefit from you. So take heed and take very keen uh, pay very keen attention to those surrounding you you're going to all of a sudden see a lot of breeders who's going to appear to be doing good that you're like i remember this guy was doing good he was trying to help me a lot of breeders are going to come up there and try to try to wash you down because they see you doing good and they feel they feel like you're coming for them like or you're going to be a threat to them later See, I feel like I'm so blessed in everything that I want to see you succeed. I want to see you do better, greater things than me. In whatever position that is in life, no one reigns forever on the top. You know what I mean? You know, heavy is the head that weighs the crown, man. I straighten your neck up. It's going to be a lot to weigh that crown. It takes a lot, a lot of weight, a lot of pressure, a lot of everything. So, but there's going to be a lot of friends and the people where I say friends, the ones you trust the most sometimes are going to be the biggest ones that's going to disappoint you and, and are going to want to see you fail and are going to want to see you drop down and not succeed at this at all, period. I don't know why, but some people's mindset is if I can talk bad about you or if I can start a beef with you, start some kind of fake beef or fake argument with you to get attention, you got to be mindful of that too. There's a lot of breeders out there that don't even have... I can't even tell you why they would be mad at me, but they're just mad at me. Is success they're mad at? And if they're mad at you success, they ain't your friends in the, in the first place. But there are a lot of people that will jump on your bandwagon when you're successful. And when you and some people are gonna hate you because of your success. So you got some jumping on the bandwagon because of your success, and some are gonna jump off because they're jealous of you. They're cool. As long as you're doing good, just not better than them, it's all right. You know what I mean? So you got to be very careful in what you do. Do what you're doing to the best of your ability and keep everybody mindset out. I said this story before. My brother told me this story and I'll make it really quick. My brother said there was a frog trying to climb a tree and he kept trying to climb the tree. One frog stopped by and told us, man, what are you doing? Before you know it, a crowd of, of, of frogs were telling them, man, you can't climb a tree. Stop climbing a tree. You can't do anything. News reporter came out there, had a big old crowd of frogs around him. This frog finally climbed the tree. And then all of a sudden, it got a lot of more cheers going on. And everybody was there first talking about him not doing it. But the reporter asked him, like, man, what, like, how, like, how did you climb the tree when everybody was telling you no? He says, oh, I'm deaf. I didn't hear any of them. So I thought they were motivating me. So what that does is tune people out when you got a focus of mindset of what you want to do in life. Stay focused. Do not let people deter you from what you want to do, man. I cannot tell you enough. Um, do that to the best of your ability. Do not let someone come in and destroy your plans because they can't see your vision. Your vision and a dream, that's why God gives you a dream for you to have. It doesn't give you a dream where you have a shared dream to the person beside you. It's your dream. It's your vision. And he's giving that to you. Right? So let that be that part. And fifth thing about breeding is you have to have faith man and believe in it and stop looking at the next man my faith is that I prayed about this before anything else before I prayed 
and I've asked God to bless me with this. Not because of fame, not because of, and I'll be honest with you, I never in a million years saw myself being in the position that I am at now. God gave me a gift. And when you're given a gift, it's not, I didn't earn this. It was given to me. So this gift that I have, I want to share this gift and use that gift and share it with someone else. Because I know I'm not deserving of this gift, but it was given to me. So when it's like a kid on a birthday is getting a toy, you get all the toys in the world. But if you can't share your toys with your friends, it's not as fun. So to me, God has given me a gift and an opportunity to spread joy and, and animals and love and be able to share this thing with another person. Another person can heed from it and take it on, pass the baton to the next person to be bigger and better things. Man, I am all for it. Sometimes we get I'm human. Sometimes we all get distracted sometimes. And sometimes we are reminded about our gifts and what our, and what our purposes and what our purposes are. I'm all over the place but most importantly it is definitely our for our for us to do our due diligence in understanding what our purpose is here so everybody doesn't have the same mindset everybody doesn't have the same goals everybody isn't wanting to do the same things so for me I am looking at this as an opportunity to be a blessing to someone else what everybody else wants to do in life. So for me, recap, man, if I can remember everything else, I know it was time, uh, time, dedication, um, your money, your friends, and then your faith, man. Um, and staying strong to what you really strongly believe in. All right. So I'm probably label this like, man, my top, top five, um, things to know about breeding before you get started or what I don't know what I, I just do these videos without um, pre-planning what I'm gonna say or do or whatever I just do these things man because I speak from the bottom of my heart I don't have any editing videos I don't gotta try to bribe you guys on something I think that's what you guys love to see It's raw is uncut it's unedited yeah I can do the funny videos and make you just be like yeah Tony man that was a good video I like that and then you learn nothing from it that's not my goal my goal is to have you learn from it um, have you learn from it and to actually go to the next step of being great and being better right so um, I hope you guys took what I'm saying just some kind of part of understanding. Um, I'm about to park, so that's why. But um, I definitely appreciate you guys, man. Um, love you guys. I'm very grateful for you guys for tuning in. If you have not done so yet, man, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. I apologize. This video isn't a video about, um, you know, puppies and all the good stuff, but very more educational for you guys out there that want to breed. Are you guys out there that's looking for a person to purchase a puppy from? Understanding your breeder is a very important thing, man. I cannot stress that enough. Don't fall for these beautiful pictures. And I've seen people got trash dogs and they wash them up and they pick. If you cannot see your dogs in, a, in their natural environment, if they got to keep taking their dogs out to the front yard and the grass was all pretty yet, and you can't see inside that kennel and you can't see it on a daily basis, not just once every three months, they show you the kennel when they finally clean it up and all that kind of stuff. Don't fall for the okie doke, man. Don't fall for these breeders that are that are talk about another breeder for them to get attention. Like, you know what I mean? You got to always ask yourself, if you are that successful in your lane, why are you stressing about another somebody else? You know what I mean? It has to, you, it has to make sense. And if you don't think about it that way, you probably already fall for, you already fell for it. You know what I mean? Because I don't bash out the breed. Now, I will defend, and I will. And even sometimes I don't even defend it. I let the truth come out by itself. You know what I mean? Um, but this fake drama stuff, people going on in this breeding world, and this is not the Rottweilers, man. It's other breeds as well. I see a lot of people with so many problems and issues with this one hating this one, and I don't know. But... Most importantly, man, hope you guys are being good, being blessed, treat each other right, and your boy is out, son.